why I switched from DSLRs to mirrorless. Hi, my name's Brian Idox, and I'm a wedding photographer based in St. Petersburg, Florida. I've been in business for a very long time and I've seen a lot of changes. I started out shooting film and we were medium format and then we went to 35 millimeter film and then we went digital. And man, I have not looked back. I mean, there's days <laughs> that I say, hey, I'm going back to film. I don't have to deal with any of that. But in reality, digital has been the answer. That's old news. Many people who are shooting today have never used film, um, but the switch from a DSLR to mirrorless is a big deal. And for me, it was also a switch to Sony. That's a whole other video why I chose Sony. But today I wanna to talk about DSLR versus mirrorless and the advantages and disadvantages of both. Now, something I wanna point out is size is often what's talked about, okay? These two cameras, this is a DSLR. This is not the biggest DSLR out there. This is a Canon 6D and this is a Sony a7 III. And you can tell they're pretty comparable in size, really. I mean, the Sony's just a little bit smaller, but honestly, weight-wise, with, with a, an equivalent lens on, they're fairly close in weight, okay? Um, when I say equivalent lens, they're both 85 millimeter 1.8s. Obviously, that's a Zeiss lens, and that's the Canon basic 85. Not the same league, but they're equivalent-sized lenses, okay? Make sense? Um, some other things that come up all the time are, uh, you know, which is better, Better is such a subjective term, okay? But one thing I want to point out is the DSLR, <laughs> I have some notes here, the SLR, single lens reflex camera, which is basically what our DSLRs of today are based on when it was filmed, was patented in 1861. Do the math real quick. That's like 160 years ago, okay? That's 159 years ago, 158 years ago. It's ridiculous. That is really, really old, especially for technology like cameras and electronics. The first SLR camera was made in 1884, which is, you know, 20 years later. So it took them 23 years from patent to making a camera. I don't know. To me, to base a new modern camera on 100 plus year old technology just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So that got me thinking. And you know, all these mirrorless cameras started coming out. And at first they seemed like toys. They just didn't really seem all that great. And then some companies started making full frame and you know, really, really good um, mirrorless cameras. And I thought, hey, this is something I should take a look at. By the way, a little factoid, the first DSLR was actually made in 1975. So think about that for a minute. The DSLR has been around for 40 plus years. It was time for an upgrade. The main thing that's different is with a DSLR, you have a mirror in the way. So every time you go to take a picture, that mirror has to flip up and out of the way, lets the light expose on the sensor, takes the picture, the mirror slaps back down. That minor sounding little thing makes all the difference in the world between these two cameras. When I turn this on, it does have a live view, but it's nothing like what a mirrorless does. A mirrorless, you are seeing what that sensor sees all the time. And it's on the rear screen and it's in the viewfinder. To me, that is key. And I actually switched over fairly easily. I thought, oh no, I have to have my eye up to that camera. I'm gonna shoot that way. You know what? First day I started using the screen down here and I, it was just wonderful going back and forth. And it just, it was a very freeing experience for me. You know, not to get all zen on you, but it was. It let me do things that I couldn't do. I'm a wedding photographer, so to me, I don't always want the attention at me as people are doing their thing. If they're dancing or if they're talking to each other, they see a camera go up to my face, they immediately know to stop and go, ee, and I hate that. <laughs> you know, we want spontaneous, candid photos. So holding the camera down here and looking at that screen, they don't even realize I'm taking a picture half the time. The other thing is, on very, very sunny days, I can review my images in this viewfinder. I'm in Florida. The sun is crazy. We don't call it the sunshine. It's not called the sunshine state for nothing. It's so blindingly bright that no screens are really, really good in that kind of light. So I don't use the back screen at all, pretty much. And I look through the viewfinder and I can see my images. I can check focus. I can check exposure. It's just awesome. Um, some things to show you, though. Um, pretty important, really. Size, as we talked about, there's that. Now let me show you another equivalent lens size. 
Okay, so I've switched over the lenses. Now I've put them to equivalent lenses, even in the quality scale, okay? This is, like I said before, this is the Canon 6D, and this has now on it a 24 to 105 F4L, made by Canon, right? It's an L lens, so it's supposed to be really good, right? Then we have the Sony a7 III with a 24 to 105 f4. Now this isn't a G Master lens, this is just a G lens, but this particular lens is awesome. There's a difference in price. <laughs> this lens goes for about $1,300. This one, I think you can get it for like 800 bucks now. So there's a difference in that, but the quality of the images, I gotta hand it to Sony in this case, that lens is better. This isn't really a review video so much, but I just wanted to show you differences in size and equivalents roughly the same i mean this is just a touch smaller overall i can't say that it's a lot smaller it actually feels more solid um one thing that happened recently is i ended up having to use a 6d at a wedding recently um just as a backup and as soon as i switched to it and turned it on i hate to say it but it felt like a toy it felt big and clunky just like um a hammer versus a very precision instrument. It just, it was it was so rough to use. Don't get me wrong, produces great images. Everything about it's awesome. But for me, the difference wasn't so much about image quality, although I do feel that the Sony a7 III far outperforms the 6D. Just, there's almost no question there. For me, it was ease of use, okay? I tend to, you know, when I was shooting with the DSLR, always look through the viewfinder. You have to, because live view is just about useless. So I would have to get down on the ground and get up really high. And, you know, if you're shooting overhead for uh, some of those reception shots, I could never see what the camera's getting. So I, you know, got known for holding my arm way up in the air and taking shots over my head and getting really good at framing those, you know. With the Sony, I can just flip the screen down and I can see. So the flip and tilt screen is the first important thing. And that's not just, you know, mirrorless versus DSLR because a lot of DSLRs have the flip screen now. Although Nikon started doing it before Canon did, just saying. Um, but another big thing for me was being able to have that screen out, see what I'm shooting from below and watch. And I could hold that at a low camera angle. I didn't have to bend over and I could go right back to a normal position very, very quickly. I didn't have to maneuver around too much. And it lets me use both eyes to see. I tend to use both eyes when I look through a viewfinder, but you can't always see everything. I'm left eyed. Uh, whereas using the mirrorless camera with the screen, I can still see everything going on around me. It makes me a lot more aware of my surroundings and I get candid moments that I would have missed before. So that's huge. The next big thing is seeing your actual exposure and depth of field in the viewfinder and on the back of the screen. That, I didn't think I was going to care. <laughs> I did not think that was a big deal. Then I started using it and I realized it's huge. It is such a big deal. It lets you get a little more creative and you don't have to wonder, did I get that shot? Did I not get that shot? You can see everything about it. Focus, everything all shows up. So if you're considering switching from an, a DSLR to a mirrorless, there's one big reason it helps you to visualize your images a little bit better. Now, one caveat, one downside to the mirrorless systems versus DSLRs. And I've tried to do some reading on this to figure out why, but I can't quite understand or I'm not getting the technical reasons as to why. But when you put a flash on a camera and you're in a very low light situation like a wedding, you have this, uh, they call it infrared, but it can't be infrared because we can't see infrared. But there's this pattern that a lot of flashes will display and the Canons and Nikons and most of the other DSLRs do this so that it helps it to focus. It's a focused assist light, okay? Most of your flashes do that. Some of the cameras even do it. With mirrorless, that apparently can't happen. It doesn't work. So the first thing I noticed right off the bat was having the wider aperture lenses was much more effective on the mirrorless bodies than it was on the DSLR. It made a bigger difference. All things being equal, shooting with like an f1.4 lens on the on the mirrorless versus on the DSLR, they both focus just fine in almost any lighting condition and you're not gonna have any issues at all. If you, if you are using like an f4 zoom lens in a very dark condition and you're trying to use flash, you're not gonna get that focus assist light. You will have a little bit more trouble focusing this camera than you would this camera under those circumstances. Other than that, which can be worked around, 
everything that I found about the mirrorless system versus the DSLR system is superior. They're smaller, they're faster, they're smarter cameras. The, most of the features in this camera are not available in DSLRs. And the makers are just starting to get into these things. They're gonna be making more lenses, more features, and they're just gonna get better and better over time. So if you're considering a new camera system or just getting into photography and you're looking to, you're trying to decide between DSLR and mirrorless, I give a vote for a mirrorless. If you like this video, give me a like and consider subscribing. I'm gonna to try to come out with more videos more often, getting into some of the nitty gritty of what the gear really does, and we're gonna show some photo shoots as time goes on too. Thanks, folks. Mm -hmm.